Good morning. This is Wednesday, September 16th, and I was amiss with something earlier this week. And I want to say thank you to uh, Don Airy for leading the music and for Pastor Jim Murray for bringing the sermon. We uh, checked in online. My wife did. I wasn't going to, but she did. But we enjoyed it very much. So thank you. You did a wonderful job. The whole church did pitching in together. So thanks for being there for us, as you always are. Today's uh, <clears throat> devotion is entitled, Praying to God in Secret. This is Matthew 6, 6. When you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. The primary thought in the area of religion is keep your eyes on God, not on people. That's a big amen. And, I, and I'll, I'll say it again, primary thought in religion, keep your eyes on God, not on people. Your motivation should not be the desire to be known as a praying person. Find an inner room in which to pray, where no one even knows you're praying. Shut the door and talk to God in secret. Have no motivation other than to know your Father in heaven as you're in there. It is impossible to carry on your life as a disciple without definite times of secret prayer. And really what Oswald is driving at is getting alone with God. And having just come back from vacation and being alone with my wife, it enhances the relationship. So when we have these secret places, these alone times with God, they enhance our relationship. They deepen the relationship. Matthew 6, 7 says, When you pray, do not use vain repetitions. God does not hear us because we pray earnestly. He hears us solely on the basis of redemption. I've heard a lot of people pray earnestly that weren't redeemed. And it sounded terrific, but they weren't redeemed, so it was going no higher than the ceiling. So earnestness is not the driving factor behind our prayer. It can tie in with that, as we understand our prayers are based on what Christ did for us, dying on the cross. God is never impressed by our earnestness. Prayer is not simply getting things from God. That is only the most elementary kind of prayer. Prayer is coming into perfect fellowship and oneness with God, again, that alone time. If the Son of God has been formed in us through regeneration, Galatians 4.19, then he will continue to press on beyond our common sense during prayer time and will change our attitude about how we pray in the things we pray for. Matthew 7 states, everyone who asks receives. We pray religious nonsense without even involving our will. In other words, we just ramble on. He said it up here. It's vain repetitions. And then we say that God didn't answer that prayer. But in reality, we never really asked anything. We just rambled. Jesus said, you will ask what you desire. That's John 15. Asking mean, means, and this is where our desire comes in, our will is involved with that prayer time. That's how we build in the desire. What is in our will? What do we want God to hear or say? That, that's the desire portion. Whenever Jesus talked about prayer, he spoke with wonderful, childlike simplicity. Very important. Then we respond with our critical attitude saying, yes, but even Jesus said that we must ask. Remember that we have to ask things of God that are in keeping with the God whom Jesus Christ revealed. And what he means by that is it's the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is what we're praying, does it fall under the will of God for our lives? And if he reveals it to us that it doesn't, will we be free enough to release that and trust him? The best example of our will being involved with our prayer is the day that we found Christ as, salva as Savior, salvation moment. In that redemption moment, our will was to be redeemed. At that moment, we were tying in perfectly with God. Our will was tied in perfectly through that prayer to be redeemed. That's what he's driving at. Our will and our desire all come together, and we find that flow in that secret place with God. So the challenge is today, can we find a secret place? Have we been alone with God? so that our, our relationship can develop. Then can we involve our will in the prayer, not just ramble, but involve our will in the prayer. And lastly, can we have that simple childlike faith as we pray, knowing that however God answers it, it's good.
Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the directions that Jesus gives us in the Lord's Prayer. It's the perfect prayer. So, Father, I pray today that we would find that secret place. We just go somewhere quietly. If we're on the job, maybe during lunch break or during a coffee break, or if we're at the house, we can go sit somewhere quietly, turn everything off, and just find you in that secret place. Share some alone time with you. And then, Lord, as we grow, I pray that we could uh, affect our will to the prayer, mean that uh, we would seek you out with earnestness. We wouldn't just ramble on. And lastly, Lord, that we would be children at your feet, trusting that you have this in hand. We thank you, Lord, for all you give us through prayer. Be with us, I pray, and we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.